This video is a bit non-typical from me, but I think this really has to be talked about more in depth because the entire Reflection 70B situation is kind of going crazy. People are calling this the LK99 of AI right now, and the evidence are piling up like crazy on this one. And a lot of people has been asking me about this, so let me give you a quick rundown. So a few days ago, an open source model called Reflection 70B was announced by this guy called Matt Schumer. It's a big deal because on benchmarks, this 70B model has beaten Llama 3.1405B, which is six times its size, and it's comparable to Clot 3.5 Sonnet and better than GPT-40 in many cases on the benchmark they shared. Not only that, it fully scored the GSM-8K benchmark as the missing 1% are actually benchmarks that are incorrectly labeled. And this is a sign of a good model that did not cough cough memorize the benchmark, and they have also checked for decontamination, so this result must be real. It got nearly 10k likes on X or Twitter, and the publicity of this went wild, with their key technique of being reflection tuning, which is adding a reflection section to have the model to self-verify its results during the generation. They claim that this reflection technique is baked inside during its fine-tuning, along with another planning tag within its thought generation. And I'll also be making a video on how hard it is to achieve this, so stay tuned. And having their fine-tune able to bring an already well-made 70B model into a colossal level that can compete with the state-of-the-art? This reflection tuning method is crazy, no? So the community got really excited because not only this is an open source project where they have published their model weights, this would prove that fine tuning and prompt engineering is very important in language modeling. Well, more than what we have thought, of course, which resonated with the people who are excited about the strawberry project that OpenAI is cooking. That is speculated to be a high performance reasoning model that is very good at prompting and chain of thought. And at the end of reflections, announcement, they promised they would use the same method to train the Llama 3.1405B model and will release it next week. With a special thanks to Sahil and Glaive AI that is behind the data, the compute, and this project. And he also said that Glaive AI is also behind the synthetic data which is used to train Reflection 70B because the hardest thing for a good baked-in chain of thought or basically a model with consistent thought generation would need synthetic data. We'll get back to this later. So Matt Schumer and Sahil fine-tuned, not even trained, a model near to the level of state of the art. As their fun little site project, by the way, Matthew Berman also did an interview with him soon after the announcement, and as an AI news journalist, he was fast on getting the latest juice on how they have done it. I respect him for that. So yeah, for the people that can run the Reflection 7TB model, which is most of the people, Matt Schumer said that everyone can try it out on other API services completely for free for a week. This is important here, completely for free for a week. And Hugging Face Spaces, Hyperbolic, and Open Router quickly started supporting the model. But keep in mind, the model that Matt Schumer gave to all the other API services are all in different precisions, and he only confirmed that their private API is the real deal that is working. And so far, things make sense. I get why people wouldn't want to give out their private API for traffic and performance reasons, but it already started to be weird not giving these services full precision models. Because you don't give away full precisions usually if your model is not open sourced, so there's a reason for people to hop onto your private API. However, in this case, their model is completely open sourced. But I mean, new models are usually hard to distribute and they have set up a hugging face repo and uploaded the weights. So why not people just try that? So instead of trying out the APIs, there are still individuals that are able to run the full precision 70B model themselves. But things started to get weird. Once people got their hands onto the weights and started to run it, they all ran terribly on the benchmarks. So he gave some solutions and said that he will fix it. Then he explains that, oh, the weights are broken because of the weird upload limit that Hugging Face has. Then even when they got the limit removed, they claim that they rushed it and probably upload parts of two different models to address the performance issues. But it still worked, which is really weird. And accidentally mixing up models doesn't usually just work. And he finished his post with just talk to the people that made it work, which is weird because you're not going to know who actually got it working. And he keeps on saying everyone's version is incorrect. Well, at this point, as small mistakes always happen, especially when there are millions of people watching his every move now, I think a lot of people understand this and gave him some space to fix it. But at the same time, the models he gave to the API services started to have problems, as people are not getting decent results too. So people started to get suspicious about it. Then, a Redditor ran some tests on the model and directly measured the weight difference between Reflection 70B and Llama 3.170B. And it turns out that it's not a Llama 
3.1 70B, but it's a Llama 3 70B with LoRa tuning on it, because there is completely zero difference between all of the layer norms when comparing Reflection 70B and Llama 3 70B, as LoRa in this case only tuned the attention layers. This is probably unrelated, but when Matt Schumer announced this model, he didn't put the Llama 3.1 in the name Reflection 70B. So Meta contacted him to do it as he claims it's a Llama 3.1 model. But under the hood, the model they uploaded to Hugging Face is a Llama 3 model. And in the initial model card when he published the weight, it says Llama 370B, not Llama 3.1. Okay, let's say there is a possibility that they uploaded the wrong model and maybe he didn't fine tune the model himself because a model fine tuner would not make this big of a mistake as 3.1 and 3 are really different models and he is just too busy and sleep deprived and made all these mistakes. So most people still trust his words and gave him time to fix the model. So, so far it has been a model uploading problem, right? So seeing people are still getting bad results even after the model is uploaded, he decided to further train the model and made a third epoch. So we all know now the fine tune is a two epoch model with an EP2 working version as the re-upload for the original and the EP3 model that is the newer version he tries to redirect people after fixing the tokenizer or whatever problem he has claimed it to be. It only took people one second to find out that the model checksum using a SHA-256 algorithm from the model of EP2 and EP3, which are Epoch 2 and Epoch 3, that he claims to have fine-tuned are the exact same model. So looking at this, he didn't retrain anything at all and re-uploaded the same model and claim it to be a fixed version. Okay, so even if the checksum is bugged or something, which probably would never happen because that will mean crypto wouldn't exist, this person also did us all a favor and ran the hash check through every model weight and the hash for each model weight even matches. So maybe he just uploaded the wrong weights again. I mean, what's the moral of the story of Boy Cry Wolf? So at this point, the open source weights have gone down in drain. Of very confusing one too where he is just throwing out weights for people to fail to replicate his results. Maybe there are hopes in the private API they serve, right? So Matt Schumer provided their private API to different third-party AI benchmark companies and not the weights. And a company called Artificial Analysis ran the benchmark on the private API he provided them with and these are the benchmarks that they got. And reason they are so blurry is because Artificial Analysis has deleted their tweet on this. And after one or two days, they made a clarification tweet that they were given a private API but after using the EP3 model, which did not match the API's performance, they have decided to unpublish the results. And in Reflection 70B's playground, people have suspicions that the private API they provided to other inference or API services to access their model with full capabilities is actually just Claude 3.5 Sonnet, with some twist in the system prompts probably. And people raise suspicion on this because it is hard filtering out the words like Claude to prevent the model from accidentally saying that it is a Claude model. Some people even say that Matt Schumer is keeping eyes on people discussing about Reflection 70B and he keeps on switching model providers because the results vary way too much. But that's pure speculation as we wouldn't really know what model it is even if you ask the model what it think it is, as models never really learn its name. And they could also be synthesizing the data through Claude. But so far so bad. Fun little side project by the way. And after I thought about this more carefully, to make a model like this in Wii, is actually a bit too impressive. Even News Research, the open source lab with some of the most cracked researchers that pioneer synthetic data and instruction tuning, couldn't achieve performance this impressive as Reflection 70B where a model can beat another model that's six times larger. And they only released their synthetic data fine tune Hermes 3 a few weeks ago. A group of seasoned fine tuning researchers with four years of experience versus a guy done this in a few weeks as a fun site project, it definitely spells a a bit fishy. As for the insane benchmark's performance, no one really used GSM 8K because it's known for being a very bad benchmark as it's literally code grade school math with 1% being complete mistakes, while AI models are getting to human level performance. Dr. Jim Fenn also made a really good breakdown on how people can game aka cheat the benchmark with public data sets available so they can just prompt engineer it to make sure the model is fine-tuned on the benchmark while not showing signs of contamination. Laura on a benchmark 
benchmark with clever prompt engineering tricks to bypass the benchmark contamination check. And now if you think about it, the Llama 3 plus Laura makes a bit of sense. But this is an insane jump to conclusion, of course. But in the case if Matt Schumer is actually insanely skilled, which he didn't deny when he was praised, nor attributed the success to someone else besides Sahil from Glaive AI, Matt Schumer couldn't recognize what Laura is at first glance, and as a really basic model fine-tuning term, that's a pretty big red flag I would say. And he doesn't seem to be familiar with using big models as he never got an uploading limit before, and with a commit history that is in a complete chaos. And he didn't know Llama 3.1 has a licensing term where he has to put the name on any model fine-tunes, which was a controversial big news for all the fine-tuned people. And he changed the model card like it's a thing you fidget with. You don't do that as people need that precise information to use and build on that model. So it's kind of hard to believe that someone has barely handled any big models can fine-tune a state of the art just like that. My gut is telling me he definitely did not train this, probably Sahil or someone else did it. What's even worse is that he didn't declare that he is an investor in Glaive AI, even though it might just be a few thousand bucks. He phrased it like he does not even know how much he invested. Oh, I think I might have invested in 1k. I don't know why he's trying to say this like in a nonchalant tone and acting like he doesn't know. It's his money and a very important information. Like does he own the company or not? It sounds really dismissive, which is a huge red flag. So why would he do all this to put his name on the line? Well, I theorized two incentives that he might have. One is to promote Glaive AI with this fake fine tune, which would sell the idea about how good the synthetic data Glaive AI provides that can even help you reach state of the art. As him being the investor, and there's a lot of money in selling data sets. Two is to earn the price difference from serving to people using its private API. I think this one may be less possible, but he can intentionally mix his Claude 3.5 or GP40 wrapper slow to fake custom backends that cannot support the demands, then give this private API to API service providers that would sell at a higher markup as they have claimed to be free for a week. So API deals with these companies will give him money from selling the price difference between APIs, and he wouldn't have to be transparent about how much compute he has. So if this works out, they can sell it even more expensive for their Reflection 405B that they claim to be training right now and will be announced next week. And it's really easy to give excuses for underperforming models, like you are running low precisions, which he gave out, and not using the correct system prompt, which, well, he did post a real system prompt, just don't know if that works. These can all be a way to attract people to their company, their API, or whatever. So it's really just a waste of time for everyone if this is not real. When he only answers, his version works, aka the same thing happened in LK99. Anyways, the man in question has gone radio silent ever since September 8th, and we will probably find out the truth soon, whether legit or not. But with this amount of evidence piling up, it's really not looking good at all. So what do you think? Am I being too harsh on him? I did have some benefit of the doubt, but I lost it at some point during these few days. But let me know. Never mind. As of editing this video, Sahil from Glaive AI tweeted out an update, with Matt Schumer also tweeting another one that really didn't tell us anything about the situation other than just wait for them. I'll just put this up. You can read it yourself. I'm not going to read the whole thing. However, we finally have gotten the real news that might just crack it all. The hyperbolic CTO tweeted his perspective on this whole situation. The CTO, Yu Chen Jin, has been the most supported about hosting open source models, and I feel bad he had to go through all these stress and BS. So let me quickly go through what he shared. On September the 3rd, Matt Schumer reached out to us, which is hyperbolic, saying that he wanted to release a 7BLM that should be the top open source model, and they assumed that it's surpassing 405B in certain areas, and then they agreed. And then two days later, on the morning, Matt made an announcement and claimed that the model outperformed closed source models across several benchmarks. And he uploaded, uh, well, Matt here, uploaded the first version to Hugging Face. And then they downloaded the model and tested the model, but they didn't see the thinking tags as well, which is featured on his demo. So he messaged him to let him know and later saw his tweet saying there's an issue with the tokenizer and so they waited and then he woke up at 6 a.m on september 6th and received a message from sahil which is the founder of glaive at 3 a.m by the way and then he was told that the reflection 7b ways have been re-uploaded and hyperbolic can now deploy it this is the first message sahil ever messaged uh, the cto of hyperbolic and at 6 30 he was added to the slack channel to help streamline the communication and he helped them to deploy the reflection
Collection 70P model until it was live at 9 a.m. And the test shows, well, the both tags are working, the thinking and reflection tags are working as expected, which is nice. But after Hyperbolic released their API, people said that, oh, um, it's not working as well as the internal demo, which is their Reflection 70B website. And so they dug into it and made sure that it wasn't their problem once again. So at that day, 7 p.m., <laughs> Matt said Hyperbolic's API definitely is wrong or like something's a bit off and have set up the debugging for Matt. So uh, Hyperbolic CTO set it up for him the next hour, but there was no response until like the next night, which Matt said uh, they were gonna make a retrain, which also surprised Hyperbolic CTO. And then on September 8th, Sunday morning, Matt said that, oh, it has been re-uploaded to uh, Hugging Face and then asked if Hyperbolic again can host them when it's uploaded. And then they said yes. And then several hours later, someone on X pointed out the E3, uh, well, the third Epoch model, which I mentioned earlier, had been uploaded to HF. And then Matt confirmed it should be that one. However, as uh, people said, it's the same exact model. So he quickly hosted it and notified co-founder of Artificial Analysis to help benchmark the result. And the result was not good from the Epoch 3. And it is much worse than their internal API. And later they posted the results. Uh, yeah, this one is the, they explained why they took down the their benchmark from the private API. Since then, uh, Matt has been ghosting him for over 30 hours while ghosting the hyperbolic CTO. And then they decided to take it down to allocate their GPUs to more useful models. He was uh, emotionally damaged by this because they spent so much time and energy on it. And it's it's just, it's just unfortunate. But he said that he doesn't regret hosting it as it helped the community instead identify the issues more quickly, which man, gotta give him a big respect for that. And then he ended the post with a very nice uh, touch up. Uh, I don't want to guess what might have happened, but I think the key reflection is attention is not all you need. But yeah, I think that's a pretty big nail in the coffin for this whole situation. And man, I feel bad for the CTO and well, whoever has wasted time to deal with uh, their BS. Thank you, Yu Chen Jin, for being this transparent. And you can really see how odd Matt Schumer was jumping randomly from state of the art open source models when it was still unannounced to announce seeing state of the art even beating closed source without warning and for the hyperbolic cto at that point there was really no solid reason for him to back out even though how matt schumer have done that is really suspicious but yeah i think this definitely marks an end of a saga how unfortunate anyways i usually don't cover news like this i cover research papers instead so check out my other videos if you want some latest weekly hot new research papers breakdown check out my newsletter i cover news there too that are usually summed up in one line and thank you guys for watching Watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelum, Robert Zaviasa, Owen Ingram, Lewis Muck, Tanaro, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.